So today is a very special video. A little while ago we wrapped up Live Wires for the Win, which was an elimination style competition series where wire artists created weekly challenges to make all kinds of different wire art and jewelry. And the winner of Live Wires for the Win was Tim. One of the prizes for the winner of Live Wires for the Win was a collaboration video with me on my channel. So now Tim has gone ahead and made a tutorial for that wonderful work of art that actually won him the competition. So I'm going to link up below in the description where you can go see his three part series on how he created his work of art, which was a stand with a dangling pendant that could be used as a piece of art or as a wearable piece of art. What I've done for this video is I simplified the stand. It's super simple. You'll definitely have to go over to Tim's channel to check out how to make his wire woven stand. And for the pendant, I've done a extension of my goddess pendant. Actually, it ends up being sort of a multi collaboration video because Michael suggested to put a fish tail on the goddess to create a mermaid. And also independently, Jay had suggested to make a mermaid in the same style. And then of course the goddess was originally inspired by my sister who paints beautiful line drawings of goddesses in the same style. So enjoy this tutorial which was inspired by many different people and be sure to check out Tim's channel and his video series on how to create his work of art. What you're going to need for the project is 16 gauge wire for the stand and I'm using 20 gauge wire for the mermaid and you'll need your tools. So I have a 12 to 15 inch piece of 16 gauge wire. I'm just going to bend it on a right angle. We'll just hold it with our thumb, bring it around to complete the circle. And I'm just going to attach it here. This is going to be much more simple than Tim's design. Not nearly as beautiful. So be sure to check out his tutorial. This is thick wire. So I'm going to use my memory wire cutters. Give it a clip and then just push that so it's flush. Now I want this part to stick up so I'm just going to hold that in place and push that straight up and straighten it out. And then I'm going to get a smaller uh, pill bottle and just bring this around to make the part that we're going to hang the mermaid from. So we're just going to curve it around. Very very simple. I'll just make a loop. So get your looping pliers, hold this in place and bring that straight up and then you can clip it here. doesn't have to be fancy. You're just going to have it so you can hang the mermaid on there. Very, very simple. So now I'm going to take about an 18 to 20 inch piece of 20 gauge wire and a little to one side. I'm just going to take my looping pliers and form the head. So you can decide how big you want the head to be. We're just going to bring it around here. If it's too big, go to the next size down, bring it around here. If you don't have these, just use round pliers or the end of a pen. And then you want to bring it up to make the arms. This is exactly how I made the goddess. We're just going to change it up with the tail. So we're just going to hold that in place, bring it around to the top here. And then if it's easier, just get your round pliers and bring that around here and then form the hand. So we just have that one here. So again, we'll get the looping pliers, bring it around, smooth it with your finger. So it's somewhat symmetrical if you can. And then just take your round pliers, bring it down. And we want the other hand to land underneath that hand. So we're just going to bring that one around and then we can just bring that one down around here. So now if you want, you can remove your pliers you can just run this around. So it comes down about the same on either side. So now to form the breast, you can either do the style I did with just looping it or you can make a complete circle. So what I want to do first is just Bend that down, bring the looping pliers in there and form an actual 
loop. And then we're going to do the same here. Just bend it underneath the arm and then bring this one around to form a complete loop. See if you like the size. This one looks better to me. We're going to bring this one in and then out to form the hips. So now if we if this one's too high just like rotate it down a little bit bring it around and then you can compare them and as in true life they don't have to be completely symmetrical so we're going to bring that one out here and we just have the beginnings of the hips so now what we want to do is just like smooth it out just give it a little bit of a curve same on this side bring it out and bring a little bit of a curve and then we can just form the tail so we're just going to take this side bring it up and around see how it looks make the loop a little bigger if you need to just use the lower part of the looping pliers and then I'll just get the round pliers to form the tail part so we could just go around here and then bring that one down here You can form this in any way you want. You can sketch it out first. I'm just doing sort of a basic fishtail. Bring that one around here and then down and we want to bring it up again. You could even use the end of a petal bottle just to bring it up to form that curve. So once you have that as you like it, then we want to bend this one up at a right angle. So we'll just take this side here we're just going to bend it up at a right angle. Line these up how you like. Just take this wire, make a little circle, tug it so it's closed, clip it there, pinch that one in a bit, and then we're just going to bring that one in and we'll do our spiral. So I like to do my spirals on a cone. This is just a display cone. You can also use a ring cone or a mandrel. I'm just going to bring this one around a few times. Clip it, get our round pliers and just hold the end with the round pliers and just rotate it in. This is my preferred way to make the spirals from the outside in. And then we're just going to flick of the wrist, bring it towards the center and then push it down. And then from there, we can just push that one all the way down. Get our flat pliers just to push it in. If you have to close that gap, you can. If this is too tight in there, just take your pliers. You can always adjust it a little bit as need be. Do any last minute adjustments that you have to do. You can always put a bead in there. I'll link up the video where I made it with a chain and a dangling bead. You can also add hair on the mermaid. I'll link up some other videos on how to do the hair. So here's another mermaid that I did that can be used as a pendant, an art piece, or made bigger as a sun catcher. I've made some templates that will be available in my Etsy DIY shop for mermaid tails and mermaids. And then you can either put a jump ring and put it on a pendant or you could just hang it. There you see she sits really nicely on the stand. If you want to make a more ornate stand be sure to check out Tim's video. So thanks so much to Tim for your amazing participation in Live Wires for the Win. Be sure to check out Tim's channel for all kinds of funky wire art and jewelry tutorials. Thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more wire art and jewelry making videos. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I go live and when I post new videos. And if you'd like to check out our wire art and jewelry on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry. And also, if you'd like to show pictures of your own work, be sure to join the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. I'll link it up below. And also, if you'd like to get on my mailing list for upcoming competitions and all kinds of exciting events, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter and I will send you my free Wire Art Essentials ebook. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you the next time.